Good morning. Good morning and good morning, everyone. We are so excited to have you with us today. Uh, it's another it's another uh, 21 day series about to kick off. And I see you in the comments already. You are chiming in. You're letting us know where you're watching from. There are 428 devices connected already. And we know that that number will grow as we continue uh, in this journey today. Pastor Snell is already connected and ready. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna prolong it, but I do wanna do some shout outs. Today is day one of 21. So for those of you that are here, you already have your number one, right? So you know how we do, like when I, we check in with Pastor Paul tomorrow or with myself on the other days, you wanna make sure you let us know how many of you come to, and we're gonna do something a little bit different. That is, we wanted to know how many people have you invited? Uh, how many people have you invited to this 21 day series? Eight o'clock on Sabbath and Sundays, 6 a.m. on <laughs> the Monday through Friday. Now, I have a little joke. I say, I say that the central time zone is the Lord's time zone. That's the only reason why I say that is because everybody goes off of the Eastern time zone. I feel like we have to set our clocks based on Eastern, no matter where we live in the United States. But the central time zone is the Lord's time zone. So yes, 6 a.m. central time, Monday through Friday. Want to make sure you guys are here. I see you shouting out in the chat. Donna's in the chat. Uh, somebody's here from uh, some some Alabama folks are here. We see some folks from Long Island, New York. Uh, see some folks saying one of 21 ready for no more excuses. Ah, no more excuses. Tulsa, Oklahoma, Tulsa, Oklahoma is in the chat. Santa Barbara, California, Ridgeland, Mississippi, Huntsville, Alabama, Atlanta, Georgia. Man. Whoa, 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 whoa. Lori J says five invited. That's amazing. That is amazing. <laughs> Anderson, South Carolina, Brooklyn, New York. Uh, our moderators are already doing their, their great work in the chat by letting you know, you know, we want to say a word of greeting to you. We want to say welcome. We want you to know that you are not a number here, that you are family. And we are excited that you are with us. Savannah, Georgia, Teen Wilson uh, uh, from Long Island, New York is with us. Carolyn uh, from Georgia is here. We're excited that all of you are able to come and hang out with us today. Well, uh, yesterday we heard session one, essentially this might actually be day two of 22 <laughs> because yesterday was a bonus. Uh, in fact, Pastor Snell went over chapter one. If you read it today, you will hear some similar uh, motifs and themes from chapter one as he was sharing in the message yesterday. So he's going to dive deeper into that today, giving us some other perspectives uh, in terms of being excuseless. Oh, Kingston, Jamaica is in the house. Maryland is in the house. Madison, Alabama is in the house. Philly's in the house. Nassau, Bahamas is in the house we somebody says welcome everyone to the excuseless revolution actually that's Roycelyn Marcel one of our moderators thank you so much for being with us today somebody says I like the t-shirts yes and and we are working somebody asked me yesterday how do we get the t-shirts if we're not in Huntsville we're gonna we're working to make them available uh, online um, on Breath of Life TV. They're not currently available yet. At least I don't believe they are, but I will get that information for you and make sure that we have it available as we go throughout the 21 days. Uh, so I want to ask you this. I want to ask you this as we get ready to get started. One of the questions that we left off with yesterday in the Praise Cafe was, what have you disqualified yourself from? What have you already said? This is not for me. What have you already said? Well, God, that I don't have the required skills. That that's that's not something that you should be asking me to do. You should ask that person to do. What what is the thing that you have noticed? Uh, maybe even feel bothered by. Maybe even feel annoyed by. And it's always brought to your attention, but nobody else seems to see it the way that you do. I believe that somewhere there. Somewhere in that annoyance, almost, God is speaking to you and he is sharing with you something that he would have you do. We want to be excuseless. And one of our excuseless questions of the day today is, what have you disqualified yourself from? What have you disqualified yourself from? This is not one where we get to look to the right or the left, where we can talk to our, our spouse or our children or our loved ones at our house, or even those that we might be watching with. This is one that you've got to sit with on your own. You've got to me meditate on that. Ask God, 
Hmm, have I been disqualifying myself from something? God, give me the sensitivity to know what, what have you been saying to me that I've just been brushing off? Oh, uh, well, that's our excuses question for today, to, for the day today. As we get ready to open it up, let's bow our heads for a word of prayer, and then we're going to bring on our speaker. Father, we are just so excited for your love, your grace, and your mercies. We're thankful for this space, 21 days of refreshing, 21 days where we're going to traverse the insight and perspective and wisdom that you have given to your manservant and placed within this book. And so, God, we ask that you would attend us. We ask that you would bless us, that you would make our hearts and minds and spirits sensitive to the move of God, sensitive to what you are saying to us individually, sensitive to understand and see more clearly where we are making excuses so that we can become all that you created us and intended us to be. Bless us to this end, we pray, Father, in the matchless name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. All right. All right. Doc, how are you this morning? Bless the Lord, everybody. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Let me see what we got here. That man, th th we just want to say a word of welcome to you as well, Pastor Snell. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. We we can hear you and see you clearly. And I see uh, several people. See several people in the chat are already chiming in, saying good morning from Edmonton, good morning from Houston, uh, good morning oh, from yeah. I like I like to wear my unrealistic faith shirt to work. I invited coworkers to join me in this excuseless endeavor. I love that, oh, Barkita awesome. Riley. But Doc, how are right. you this morning? Hey, I'm blessed. I am blessed. I am I am grateful. Uh, that the Lord's mercies have been new this morning, that his compassions mm. have not failed. And I can just say like the psalmist, from the rising of the sun, sun to the it. going down of the same, that the name of the Lord is to be praised. Therefore, I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Listen, saints, this is the day that the Lord has, Lord has made. Been. I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it, man. So I'm I'm excited, grateful to be here with you, Pastor Nugent, and with our Breath of Life and Oakwood University Church family. Amen, amen, amen. Uh, we're excited to have you here as well. Well, we, 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 we want to start with one quick question, and we're going to give the time over to you. And so our question to you, Doc, is, mm -hmm. and I think you kind of answered this one mm -hmm. already, um, in, is there is there any any area that you hear God saying to you that you've been making excuses? Now, now that I've said this, the other speakers for the other mornings are going to get a chance to prepare themselves. But you're the first one, so you didn't get a chance to prepare. Mm -hmm. But are is there anywhere in your life that you're saying, I, be, I, I believe in this particular area, God is sharing with me that I've been making excuses? Oh man, is there, there's not one area. Mercy. <laughs> there are several areas uh, where, where the Lord has been growing me. And I, and the thing that I would want our, our audience to know that I didn't necessarily write, the, write this based on an assessment of what I'm seeing in other people. Mm. Like this journey began with me. Um, there were a variety of areas in my life where as I sat still with the spirit of God, you know, he began to just corner me in some areas and he began to call me to some higher heights. And and so, you know, one of the things that I'm looking at doing this week, I have um, there's a certain amount of time that I want to dedicate to prayer each day. I'm mm. not going to say what that amount of time is, but but what I've covenanted, made a covenant to do is to not allow any excuse to keep me from connecting with God for that. That's it predetermined amount of time each day. Um, this week, in, in addition to this, uh, there's a certain amount of uh, time I've committed to saying I'm going to I'm going to move my body and be active and exercise and I'm not going to yes. let any excuses get in the way of that. And, and then there are some things that with with family time, because life for me is busy, it's here and it's there. And I, <laughs> I can be in Toronto one part of the week in New York, another part of the week here. But I've made some decisions to say, no matter what happens, 
there are certain things as it relates to family time. I'm not going to allow any excuse to keep me from engaging in the way that I'm supposed to be engaging. That's awesome. That's awesome. And I, and I yeah. want to pose that question to our audience as well. You, 865 uh, devices are connected right now. And mm -hmm. I, I do want to highlight one comment, Doc, and that yeah. is from D Sev. D Sev, uh, he, he, they, they said Krispy Kreme. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Listen, yes, yes. Uh, the, the saints are savage this morning, but uh, it's, it's strongholds. It's, 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 it's strongholds. <laughs> oh, man. I, I tell you what, that, but I think I think what, all of the areas that you talked about, getting more active, spending more time in prayer and, in, in, and prioritizing that family time. Um, mm -hmm. I, I know for, for our family, we have game night on Tuesdays and it's supposed to be a no yeah. phone space, no device space. And yeah. I, I might yeah. have, I may have violated that a time or two. I know that they're probably at home saying, yeah, dad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I feel you on, on several of the things that you have, have, have talked about. And, and I want people to understand it. It needs to be practical. It mm -hmm. needs to be incremental. You need to give yourself grace, but we need to be mindful that yeah. excuses are how we get off track. Excuses yeah. how is how we may miss a day and never regain that momentum again. And so yeah. those excuses, the excuses yeah. part is really what we're focusing in on. And I thank you for being open and honest and transparent with us, Doc. I think that's absolutely awesome. Well, mm -hmm. Doc, we want to give the time over to you. I, we know that you have some things you want to share with the people this morning sure. for, as we kick off this 21 days of prayer on our journey to becoming excuseless. Yeah, yeah. So as we get into it, let me just uh, go ahead and just encourage you. If you're online, I need you to do a little digital discipleship. I need you to that's be right. an Apple apostle, even if you're under the Android and non anointing. <laughs> <laughs> need you to be an electronic evangelist. If you're on Facebook, I need you to go ahead and hit that share button two or three times. If you are watching us on YouTube, I need you to copy that link and send it to somebody that needs to get a little encouragement, a little accountability, a little spiritual strength as we begin this journey together. Uh, so as we as we get into the word today, what I want to begin by doing, and I'm going to ask Pastor Nugent to uh, put this on the screen, there is an excuseless covenant statement. Uh, that I shared with the church on yesterday. And we're going to really recite this. It's going to be our creed, our motto for the next 21 days. And I'm going to read it, and I'm going to invite you to declare it out loud uh, where you are. I can't hear you. Uh, but whether you read it uh, silently or declare it out loud, I believe there's a different power when you say it. So I want to invite you to join me in this covenant statement, and then we're going to jump into the message today. All right? Simply says this, today. I continue the journey toward excuseless living. I recognize that excuses are kryptonite to my soul and cancer to my calling. I make a covenant to stop lying to myself about why I pray so little, fall so often, procrastinate so frequently, neglect my health, live without structure, and leave family outcomes up to chance. I will add focus to essential things and withdraw focus from optional things. I will focus less on what I'm lacking and stand in the promise of God's divine supply. I will reclaim my time, budget my energy, and withhold oxygen from all excuses. This is the season. The time is now. I feel my help. Let the revolution begin. I claim God's power to become excuseless. Amen. Amen. And I'm praying that you will walk in that covenant on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, we're going to begin just with a word of prayer. Father, again, we thank you for this amazing day that you've given to us. Father, in this brief time, before we move into a season of prayer, Lord, would you just speak to us in a very clear, in a very blunt, and in a very direct fashion? Lord, hide me in the shadows of the cross that Christ alone will be seen, heard, and praised. We pray this in the wonderful name of Jesus. Let those who believe say together, amen and amen. Listen, as we jump into this today, I want you to know in many ways, Excuseless is somewhat of a companion to the book we did a couple of years ago, Get Unrealistic. Because Get Unrealistic spent a lot of time talking about faith. But excuseless is going to give us the tools to put in the work. And, and as the Bible says, just as the body without breath is dead, 
Faith without works is dead. So I need you to know that these are not two separate thoughts or ideas. One is simply an outgrowth or the other side of the other book. And so we're praying that as you have already digested one idea or concept, I believe that we'll experience some completion as we begin to add the principles and the concepts from the book Excuseless. Now today, I'm not going to focus so directly on what uh, chapter one addresses simply because we articulated some of those things in yesterday's message. But what I want to do today is I'm going to spend a little time just kind of sharing with you the burden of this book in this 21 days. And I want to spend a little time talking about the danger of an excuse. And one of the things I want to say to you today, church family, is this, is that the most dangerous element to your life, the most dangerous element to your life, it is not your enemies, it is not your opposition, it is not your challenges. I need somebody, if you don't really get anything else today, I need you to digest this truth. The most dangerous element to your life are the excuses that we prop up for why we are not growing progressing and prospering as the word says that we should and see the reason i'm saying saints that excuses are more dangerous than your enemies more than your opposition more than your challenges is simply because god has promised to take care of your enemies god has promised to make provision for your opposition god has promised to nullify every challenge in your life. And again, friends, I need you to be reminded that there is nothing too hard for God. And Romans 8 31 asks the question this way, if God be for us, who can be against us? In other words, saints, I need you to hear me, please, saints. If God be for you, there is no enemy that can be against you. There is no challenge that can be against you. There is no opposition that can be against you. There is no circumstance that can withstand the divine hand of God all over your life. So I need you to know, friends of mine, that, man, the only thing that can halt you the only thing that can limit you, the only thing that can plateau you are the excuses around why we are not going because God says, I've got you in every other area of your life. And see, this is the critical truth because God can do all things, but guess what? God has given himself one boundary. God has given himself one limitation and the one boundary, the one limitation is that God says, I will never trespass in the area of free will. In other words, God says, I will never make you choose a certain thing. I will never make you think a certain way. I'll never make you accept the truth. So he says, man, I can fight all of your battles, man. I can secure all your enemies, man. I can overwhelm all of your lack. But the only thing I cannot do is change the way you think. He said, listen, I can put all the truth in front of you. I can put the gospel in front of you. I can make it available to you in his word. But the only thing he cannot do is make you believe it. And so, friends, I need somebody to spend a little less time looking at challenges and oppositions and what is from without and recognize that the only thing that can harm or stop you comes from inside of you. And so as we talk about the, the danger of excuses, there are essentially three things that I want to talk through really quickly. And then we want to spend ample time in prayer today. See, see if you're going to begin the excuseless journey and let me slow down for just a second. You've got to make a distinction between the things that are painful and the things that are destructive. Let me say that again. If you're going to begin the excuseless journey, you got to make a distinction between that which is painful and that which is destructive. Because there are some things, saints, that are painful, but they are not destructive. And there are some things that are destructive but they are not painful. 
And in order to grow, you've got to always make a distinction between the things that bring pain and the things that bring destruction. So let me give you an example. A good deep tissue massage is can be painful, but it is not destructive. Sometimes a root canal can be painful, but it is not destructive. So that sometimes um, physical therapy can be painful, but by nature and essence and purpose, it is not destructive. But now let me give you a, a juxtapose that with something like high cholesterol. Uh, those who understand a little bit about cholesterol, you understand that cholesterol doesn't have any symptoms. It doesn't hurt. It does not injure in a way that's noticeable. It's not painful, but it is absolutely destructive to your wellness. And what I need somebody to understand is that excuses is like high cholesterol to your soul. Because see, this is what makes excuses so dangerous is that excuses don't make your side hurt. Excuses don't make your back ache. Excuses don't bring physical pain or malady. In fact, one of the dangerous thing about excuses is that excuses can be comforting. Sometimes excuses can be soothing. Sometimes excuses kind of pat you on the back and they create the appearance of safety when they are bringing a cancerous corrosiveness to the soul and they are literally eating away at your destiny. And so I need you to understand, friends of mine, it's not painful to say I'm too busy but it is destructive to say I'm too busy. It is not painful to say I don't have time, but it is destructive to say I don't have time. It is not painful to say I'm too young or too old, but it is destructive to say I'm too young or too old. It is not painful to say, man, I'm too busy to pray, but it is absolutely destructive to your soul wellness to get too busy to call on the name of the Lord. And see, friends of mine, you've got to, if you're going to grow, make a distinction between that which is bringing pain and that which is bringing destruction to my life. And I'm just at a place, church, and this is kind of where we are with this particular book and movement. I have just made the decision to say, listen, I would rather live with some pain than to die in my comfort. I would rather grow in a painful posture than to get stuck and complacent and die beneath the level that God has caused me to reach simply because it is comfortable where I am. And friends of mine, let me just share something with you. And this is going to be a game changing truth for those who embrace it. This is where some of us have to overcome some of us have to overcome the idol of convenience. See, when we think about idolatry, we think about blocks of wood and stone and gold and amulets. Uh, we think about movies and alcohol. But what many of us don't realize is that for some of us, convenience has become an idol. Comfort has become our God. So that if Jehovah is leading us down the pain that is in path, if Jehovah is leading us down a path that is inconvenient, we will choose the path that is most convenient. If God is leading us in a path where there is discomfort, guess what? Our loyalty will be to the path that is filled with comfort. And see, I need you to know that if you're willing to take a path that God is not leading, simply because it's not convenient and simply because it's not comfortable. I need you to know then that particular path is an announcement that convenience has become an idol for you. And see, I need you to get friends that excuseless living takes place when I'm willing to have my convenience interrupted, when I'm willing to allow my comfort to be disrupted. Because the truth is, I'm comfortable thinking a certain way. I'm comfortable behaving a certain way.
I've gotten comfortable talking to people a certain way. I've gotten comfortable not really being active in church. I've gotten comfortable not going back to school. I, listen, I'm comfortable with certain habits. And I need you to know, friends, that you will never grow until you allow your inconvenience to be disrupted. You've got to allow that rhythm of comfort to be thrown out of place. And at some point, you've got to take convenience off of the throne of your heart and you've got to allow jehovah to take his rightful place there the second thing that i want to say really quickly is this is that there are some of us that don't grow because we spend more time looking at our circumstances than we do looking at our savior and this is the thing i want to say about circumstances church is that circumstances they shape us but I need you to get that it is your excuses that determine us. Let me say it again or say it correctly. Our circumstances shape us, but our excuses determine us. And this is what I need somebody to get today. And, and I wish I could say this in a soothing nursing kind of way, but I need somebody to digest that what happened to you in life is not the problem. Who was not there for you is not the problem who let you down is not the problem what did not happen the way you hoped it would happen is ultimately not the problem i need you to understand the problem is not the injustice or the bad thing or the poor break the problem is the excuses that flow out of them that has limiting effect over your life See, see, let me just say this to somebody today, and I need you to make sure you get this. Because, see, what happens is when you spend too much time looking at your circumstances and what did not happen and what did not work out, and, and, and man, if I had grown up in this part of town, see, I need you to get that circumstances are excuses that allow us to blame God. See, see, certain excuses are our way of saying God is not good. These excuses allow me to say God is not fair. These excuses allow me to say that God set some up for success, but I'm a part of that population that God set up for failure. In other words, excuses allow me to suggest that man, if God had just been better, in the way he ordered my steps, my outcomes would be different than what they are. If God had just given me a little bit more favor in my family or favor in my work or favor in my career or favor in my circumstances, then my outcomes would be different than what they are. But this is the great misunderstanding about favor. See, we think favor is the absence of difficulty. Help me, Holy Ghost. Favor is not the absence of difficulty. Favor is the strength to prevail. Oh, Lord. I, I need somebody to get this, that faith is not man, just a life filled with rose petals. Faith is not a crystal stair. Faith is not the absence of challenge. It is the strength to prevail. So some of y'all are wrestling with that idea and tension because we thought that if I have the favor of God in my life, doors open without me having to push, things happen without me having to wait. Every day is harvest, breakthrough, and deliverance. It is meant a series of momentum where every break goes my way and I get what I want exactly when I want it. No, if you think that's what favor is, look at the people in scripture that had favor and what they had to go through. Did not Joseph have the favor of God over his life? And yet Joseph was allowed to be sold by his brothers, accused by Potiphar's wife, forgotten by the butler and the baker. And I need you to know that favor was not the absence of difficulty. Favor was the strength to prevail the difficulties of his life. David was given favor by God. And yet, even after he killed Goliath, he was still had to live as a 
15 year fugitive from the fury and the anger of Saul and understand that his favor was not the absence of hardship. It was the strength to prevail in the midst of his hardship. Jesus had favor. Luke chapter two says that he increased in favor with God and man. But Isaiah 53 church says that he was a man of sorrows and he was acquainted with grief. His sorrow did not just begin at the cross. His whole life was one of sorrow, but his favor was not the absence of grief and sorrows. It was the strength to prevail in the midst of his sorrows. The apostle Paul had so much favor over his life that the Bible in Acts 18 says that Paul would be so full of the Holy Ghost that people would take the sick and the lame. And when Paul came walking down the street, they would lay them in front of him. And when Paul walked by and his shadow fell upon them, the sick would get made well and the disease would be made whole. He had favor over his life, but by his own testimony, he had been shipwrecked several times at perils in days and in seas. He had been beaten 40 lashes minus one, had been jailed on several occasions, had been persecuted uh, by his brethren. But I need you to know that favor was not the absence of difficulty. It was the strength to be able to prevail against every adversity that the enemy had put in his life. And see, I need us to understand that some of us forfeit the favor simply because we run from every difficulty that poses as a threat in our lives. And see, what most people don't understand about favor is this, is that favor before it runs its course just looks like extra weight. Well, let me say it again, that that before favor fully matures, it just looks like more work, more weight, more burden, more task, more responsibility. And because we will not accept the assignment, because we will not walk in the calling, we literally by proxy abandon the favor that will distinguish our lives from everything that is average and ordinary and mundane and limited. I need somebody to understand that you can never have more than you can ask for or think if you never embrace the assignment that God has given to your life. So I need you to understand that you've got to get a new working definition for favor. You've got to get a different understanding of what the favor of God actually is. Because see, the favor just looks like weight. That's why Moses says, man, uh, who am I that I should go? I can't talk. It's why Jeremiah says, I'm too young. It's why Abraham and Sarah said, I'm too year old. Because the truth is that favor just looks like more work and more stress before it is completely matured in your life. And see, this is why, friends of mine, you can't spend a whole lot of time looking at your predicament and your disadvantages and what didn't go your way. Because the Bible says that there is no test that has come upon you except that which is common unto man. Do you realize what the word is saying? The Bible is saying there ain't nothing that has touched your life that has not touched somebody else's life. I need you to know that there is no trial that has just been carved out just for you. That song that says, nobody knows the trouble I see. Nobody knows my song. The devil is a lie. Listen, there are certain folk. I need you to see the devil makes you think you're the only one going through it. He makes you think that your troubles are bigger than everybody else. No, your troubles are just, just more visible. Your, your, your troubles may just be a little bit more obvious. But at the end of the day, friends of mine, God, God says there is nothing upon you that is not common unto man. But God is faithful who will not allow you to be tested above that which you're able to bear. And with the test, God says, I will create a way of escape. In other words, friends, I need somebody to understand this truth, that God is not looking at your life in real time and having to adjust ways of escape based upon what's happening right now. God knows the end from the beginning and the beginning from the end. God knew what you would face. God knew what you would lack. God knew where it would get hard. And I need you to know that God has already supplied a way of escape escape so that you might be able to bear what is happening in your life. And see, somebody's got to understand this truth, man. I'm trying to calm down, man, but this thing's so good to me. I need somebody to understand that your trials and adversity, they are not random. They are formulaic. 
They are a part of a divine calculus. I need you to understand that some of your difficulties are like fertilizer. And, and for anybody that's ever dealt with raw fertilizer or, or dung, it, it stinks. It is unbearable. But without some stinky fertilizer, things cannot grow. And that's why you got to embrace the promise of Romans 8.28. You hear me preach it often that, that not just good things work together for good, not just many things work together for good, not most things work together for good. But, but can I get a praise in the chat that, that all things work together for good to them who love God and are the called according to his purpose. Third thing real quick, man, I need to wrap it up so we can pray. This is it. This is it, saints. It is this. Your life can never change until you change your life. Let me say it again. Your, your life can never change until you change your life. And, and this is it, saints, because excuse makers look at conditions. The excuse less look at habits. Because, see, see excuse makers are always waiting on conditions to change. But the excuse less begin by changing their habits. And see what the excuseless understand is that when I begin to change my habits, that's when my conditions begin to change. See, excuse makers are gonna always be studying their predicaments, but the excuse less are gonna study their patterns. Because what they understand is that my life outcomes are going to reflect my patterns more than my predicaments. It's going to reflect my habits more than my circumstances. Because, see, this is where some of us are today. Each and every one of us are operating with some type of lid. In other words, there's some of us that have this lid, this limitation. For whatever reason, we cannot get past it. So some of us have this financial lid. Some of us have a marital lid. Some of us have a health lid. Some of us have a relational lid. Some of us have a spiritual lid. Like there's this cap that we cannot get past. It's holding us down. It's kind of saying here and no further. But I need you to understand that whenever there is a lid in any area of your life, that lid is a representation, not just of predicaments that need to change, but habits that need to change. In other words, there are some of us that have a financial lid, not because you don't make enough money. No, no, no. God's provision for you is more than sufficient. But the reason there is a financial lid is because of poor stewardship. Some of us are robbing God and that's the lid over your life. There are some of us that have a financial lid because we don't delay gratification. We've got to have what we want when we want it and we do not wait on the Lord. Some of us have a financial lid simply because we don't tell our resources where to go. We look up and they're gone. There are some of us that are on a under a marital lid. And see, I need you to understand that marital lid is not because you married the wrong person. It's because you're practicing wrong habits. The, I, in other words, the family altar is not a habit. Saying, I'm sorry, is not a habit. Quality time together is not a habit. You've not made a decision in your mind to say in our house, we don't curse. We don't insult each other. We don't press one another's buttons. We don't fight unfair. We don't hit below the belt. I need you to understand that there are some of us that need to recognize that even if you marry the perfect person. If you maintain the same habits, your house is destined to fail. Your life cannot change until you change the way that you live. There are some of us that have a health lid and the truth is that that health, in some ways, it reflects some, some, some liabilities, some genetic liabilities, but most of all, it reflects some habits. And see, this is what I need somebody to understand, man. This is hard truth, man. This is why, man, I was praying that the Lord would give me the wisdom, but I just got to say it like it is. Some of us need to recognize the issue is not a lack of favor. You've got to have habits that reinforce favor, not habits that nullify favor. 
Lord Jesus. There are some of us, man, that, that even though the favor of God is upon us, there is still a lid or a plateau because, man, my health habits nullify my health favor, Lord. Uh, my, my financial habits may restrain my financial favor. My, my marital habits literally undo my marital favor. My professional habits literally work against my professional favor. And see, the problem is, man, I'm looking at these circumstances and wanting them to change. But God is saying, until I stop making excuses about how I handle money and stop making excuses about how I serve or don't serve my spouse, until I stop making excuses about why I'm not growing spiritually. See, you're 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 wanting the predicament to change. You're saying, I need a new church. I need a new pastor. We need a new choir. I need, no, you got to change your devotional habits. I need you to understand, friends of mine, that your spiritual outcome should not be dependent upon what happens when you go to church or when you watch online. That's why the Bible says, man, you got to go into the house of God full because you spent some time with God before the 11 o'clock hour. That's why the word says in Psalm 100, you enter into his gates with thanksgiving. You enter into his courts with praise. See, some say, I come to praise the Lord. No, I don't come to praise the Lord. I come with praise for the Lord. See, some of us, man, 11 o'clock is when your praise commences. But listen, when you've been in the secret place with the Lord, 11 o'clock is just when your praise continues. It is where your praise just becomes public. It is where your praise just moves into a higher plane because you have already been with God in the secret place. And so what I simply want to just stop by saying today, church, is that the most dangerous element of your life, friends, and this is why this movement, this revolution is so critical, is because God says, I've come that you might have life and life more abundantly. Deuteronomy 28 says that we are to be the head and not the tail, above and not beneath, the lender and not the borrower. God says in Ephesians 3.20 that he will do exceedingly and abundantly above all you can ask or think. God says all things are possible to them that believe. Romans 8 says that you are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. I need us to know that the only thing that can hold us and bind us and defeat us and overwhelm us, it is not a boss. It is not a co-worker. It is not a hater. It is not a predicament. It is not a dad who walked out the door or a husband or wife that broke their forever covenant. The only thing that can keep me bound are the excuses and the lies and the narratives that are woven as to why I cannot grow or prosper. And I need you to know, friends, that God is wanting to detonate something inside of you. But it begins when you begin the process of saying, I'm going to write down every excuse. Every reason I've been propping up for why I can't go to school, why I can't write, why I can't record, why I haven't started the vision, why I haven't started the ministry, why I'm not active, why I'm not taking care of my health. Every excuse, I mean, that's your kryptonite. That's the only weapon formed against you that can prosper. It is the only thing that can defeat you. It is not outside of you. It's not in the atmosphere. It's inside. And this is why this book, as you walk through it, friends, it ain't going to spend a whole lot of time talking about your behavior. We're talking about your soul and what's happening. And what happens is when you begin to experience wellness and spiritual fullness, God is going to begin a work of canceling each and every one of those excuses. And you will begin to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living and the promises of the Bible will not remain bound in the pages of scripture. They will not just be theology, idea or concept, but they will become your lived truth. But I need you to recognize where the danger is. It is not in that person. It is not in that situation. It is in the excuses that have been propped up. And so today, my prayer as we walk through it, it is to begin the journey of canceling the excuses, of removing the idol of convenience. I need somebody to get to a point where you understand the difference between that which is destructive and that which is painful. I can endure that which is painful, especially if it brings about a positive result, but I got to stay away from the excuses that bring a comfortable destruction to my life. I need somebody to spend less time looking at the predicament and looking at your pattern. I had a coach growing up say that said this, you can have excuses or you can have results. 
but you can't have both. I need you to decide today. Are you going to have excuses? Or are you going to have results? But remember, saints, you can't have both. God bless you. My, 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 my. We, uh, <laughs> what a powerful message. I see several of you in the chat. I've already put your takeaways in, and I, I know that you know what the, the G deal is. And for those that are coming in fresh, maybe you're brand new, we are encouraging you to not only write down your notes, uh, write your, your takeaways and your one-liners in the chat that you want to reiterate the things that you're taking away, but we want you to write them down somewhere where you have them somewhere where you can come back tomorrow and share them. When we do our recap, uh, tomorrow morning, write down those takeaways. Let me share a few <laughs> favor is not the absence of difficulty. Mm -hmm. Oh yep. my word. Yep. Favor is yep. the strength to prevail. I, I needed it's, that one. Mm -hmm. I needed that one. I needed that one. Uh, some of us, Ooh, this one was all my toes. Some of us forfeit the favor because we keep running from the work. <laughs> mm -hmm. yep. Uh, yep. Somebody said, what, one of the pre former presidents said that opportunity is everywhere. It's just mm -hmm. dressed in overhauls and it looks like work. It looks like work. That's true. Yep. That's <laughs> it just true looks fashion. like work. And most like people work. don't want to do the work. And so mm -hmm. they can't gain access to the opportunities. That's right. And I just, yep. I hear, this is a, you know, there's, there's a certain moments where things start to click and it began to click mm -hmm. for me today as I was reading chapter one. And now hearing you again today, pastor, share this is a revolution. I, it is. I, I, you know, sometimes, you know, people use that mm -hmm. terminology and you're like, yep. okay, okay, God, let's pray for this to be. No, no, no. Mm -hmm. I, I see it very clearly today mm -hmm. yep. that if, if I dare you, all, all yep. 1,281 devices that are, I dare you, I mm -hmm. dare you to yep. let this seat down on the inside, mm -hmm. to yep. let what was shared just in today get inside and change you. Your yep. life will be radically, radically changed, changed. and this somebody is going to ask themselves, how, how, how are you making this happen? Mm -hmm. how, what, what, what did you change? And mm -hmm. your entire life will yep. become a testimony of what God can do when you begin to cancel will. excuses. And yep. this is where the revolution happens. Mm -hmm. As we cancel excuses, yep. we then also are in an opportunity to share that testimony with mm -hmm. the world around us. They'll begin asking you questions. You won't they even sure have will. to look for opportunities to you share. To when it. they yep. see the weight drop off, when they see you mm -hmm. loving on, on everybody, on people who you shouldn't be loving, when they see mm -hmm. the, the vestiges, the, 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 the tangible experiences of God's spirit in your life, yep. they're going to ask you, what are you doing? Yep. What are you doing? How can we, how can I get access to what you have? Because yep. I want to have that in my life as well. Yep. And, and this, this is why I'm saying, Doc, I, I hear it from you 5,000% today. This, mm. this is, this is unequivocally, it will be a revolution if, if you are willing to do the work. And this is why, <laughs> this is one of those, again, I say it's wildly personal because mm -hmm. you can't, you can't just say with your mouth, right. I want to, I want to be excuseless. Yep. Mm -hmm. I it's, mean, and at the end of the day, and this is a part of the burden because church world can be filled of a lot of verbiage, but not a lot of movement and activity. Mm -hmm. And, and, and this is where God is calling us as his remnant church, as his last day people, because see the things that are coming upon this world it's going to expose all empty rhetoric, verbiage, you know, in, in a part of religious world. And again, because, you know, we have our covenant statement and our declaration. But see, some of us get stuck in declaration world. We get stuck in sayings and and, and declarations. But at the end mm. of the day, you, you got to start moving in that direction. The declaration <laughs> is only powerful if it is a catalyst for action. It, it, other than that, it's just words. It's just Talk. Talk and see, this is what's going to enhance our witness when when there is so much fruit from your life. Come on, because you are acting and you are connecting and engaging and the favor of God is so abundant. You won't even have to try to create a witness. The favor and the fruit from your life speaks in Ooh. such a way that people are like, I, what you got? Who do you know? What's what's happening? I, I need what you have. That's it. Yeah. 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 Th that's, that's it. 
that's exactly it. And and with that, we wanna we wanna move into a time of prayer. Yeah. Yes, uh, yes, yes. We wanted to move into a time of prayer. Let's do that right now. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. This is the time of prayer. This is the time of prayer. Oh, yeah. Well, this is the time of prayer. I'm, I'm, I'm mindful that, <laughs> yeah. See, there, there's a lot has been shared today. Um, a lot that we have covered. A lot that, uh, we have written down. A lot that we are experiencing. People are in a moment where they're pensive and they're thoughtful and they're reflective, and they're uh, trying to understand all that 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 God is speaking to them in this moment. And we recognize that and we recognize that and we 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 want to we want to ensure that we commemorate the moment by touching and agreeing in prayer and so yes this moment is going to be filled with us uh sharing some of the requests that you're putting on screen specifically specifically uh, we are praying for excuses that we want canceled. I, I want to make that clear. I know, I know that a lot of times we come to the 21 days prayer and there's a number of things happening in our lives and we want those to be prayed over. And I want to let you know that if you put those other general prayer requests in the chat, our team will pray over them. But we also, we also, we are giving focus and special attention to the excuses that we want to cancel. Mm -hmm. And so we're encouraging you now to put your excuses in the chat. I'm going to read a number of them. Doc, are you yeah. going to, we're going to have you pray? Is that what it, what, sure. how we, okay. Well, yeah, we'll, yeah, I think we can both break them up and we can, yes. you know, begin calling on the name of the Lord over yes. the various prayer yes. requests yes. over the so, body. So let's do them in categories. Um, okay. Several are, I, I think the most that I'm seeing right now are excuses pertaining to their spiritual life. Sure excuses pertaining to their activity uh mm -hmm. at, in 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 with god excuses in terms of their prayer in terms of uh how they treat others how they love on others how they spend time in the word so let's pray for that i'm gonna ask you to pray for that first and then we're gonna shift to family excuses gotcha. and i'll i'll pray over that one all right family let's let's look together would you would you lift holy hands just right there wherever you are and would you join us as intercessors today? Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we come before you boldly because that's the way you invite us to come. And we offer up this petition today, knowing that there is absolutely no thing that is too hard for you. And Lord, today we are embracing this very powerful and clear truth. And Lord, we're wanting to shift our focus away from those things that are outside of us. Lord, we recognize that it is not our predicaments. It is not our enemies. It is not the opposition. It is not our lack. Those are not the things that can overwhelm us or destroy us or, you know, move us into a place of spiritual submission. But Lord, we realize that there are excuses, Lord, that we have allowed to be attached to us that are smothering our soul wellness. And so, Lord, what we are simply making the decision today, Lord, as we intercede and we pray against the spiritual excuses, Lord, there are different things, Lord, that we have offered up to justify why we pray so little or not at mm. all. Lord, we've made excuses for why we are not in your word or why we only have a cursory understanding of your word. Lord, there are some excuses that we've made for some sinful habits, Lord, that have matured into strongholds and strangleholds over our wellness. Lord, we've made excuses for why we are not active members or active servants in church or why we don't serve or make a difference in our community. And so, Lord, we, we begin this time in, in a space of sincere and honest repentance. Father, individually and collectively, we apologize. Lord, we acknowledge our fallenness. And Lord, we just cry out to you for a grace, Lord, that is greater than our sins and our transgressions. And Father, I'm praying for that person today who is under your conviction. 
Lord, I pray that they would operate under conviction, but never under condemnation. And Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, that 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 conviction would lead us to a place of repentance. And so, Lord, today we just begin making some new covenants, Lord, to be consistent in prayer. Lord, we're praying that that even if there is no appetite for the word, that appetite has been suppressed by other things. Lord, would you put inside of us a hunger and a thirst for righteousness, Lord? Some of us can just be real and say that hunger, that thirst, that burden is not there. But Lord, would you plant it there? Lord, would you create an appetite? Lord, would you awaken us to spiritual things in a new and fresh way? Father, I, I, I pray, dear God, that there would also be a revolution of service. Mm. Lord, help us to not say we don't have time to serve or that we've got too many things or that we're, we're so busy with work and career. But Lord, help us to have a kingdom first mentality. Lord, you said to us in Matthew 6, that we seek first your kingdom, its growth and its righteousness, that all other things will be added unto us. And so, Lord, we tear down, we destroy, we dismantle, Lord, every excuse for why we don't pray and why we're not in your word and why we're not serving and Lord, why we are allowing certain strongholds to smother us. Us. Lord, we make no more excuses. Lord, we will not lie to ourselves any longer. And Lord, some may not have the victory today or tomorrow or this week, but Lord, the stronghold begins to lose its power when we simply cease to make the excuse. So, mm. Father, we ask dear God for a fresh infilling of your Holy Spirit. Some have prayed and put that in the chat. And Lord, we know this is in harmony with your will. For you said, if we being evil know how to give good gifts to our children, you're that much more willing to give the Holy Spirit to them that but ask. And so, Lord, we ask for the Holy Spirit. Lord, we believe for the Holy Spirit. And Lord, we claim the access that is available to us through the promise of the Son, Jesus Christ. So come, Holy Spirit. Lord, we welcome you in. We open up both corridors of the heart. And Lord, we sequester no space, nor no room, no chamber in the soul. But Lord, we give you free reign and free access. Lord, we give you a key to every locked door so that every dark thing would be illuminated, so that every hill would be brought low. Every valley in the spirit would be made straight. Lord, and, uh, every valley would be filled and every crooked place made straight. So Lord, do a work of revival in us individually. Do a work of revival in us collectively. We make no more spiritual excuse. And Lord, we claim your power in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God, we stay right here in this moment uh, praying for. So now we've, we've, we've come to you. We've prayed for those things that we have been making excuses for spiritually. Yes, but God. there are other areas of our lives and some of it, yes, it overlaps. But there are other areas of our lives where, with our families, uh, with our health and our diet and our exercise, with our finances. God, with equipping ourselves, some of us have made excuses for not doing the certification, for not yes. taking the course, for not going back to school, for not pursuing the degree. We have made excuses that have barred us or barred you rather from opening additional doors for yes, us, yes. for additional ministry that could have been. God, we, we, we bring those excuses before you now excuses that have kept us in the shackles Please, of Jesus. food addiction which we don't yes, talk Lord. about help us addicted Lord. to salt addicted to sugar addicted to sweets addicted to convenience even in our diet yes, Lord. god we cancel those excuses we lift them up on the altar we pray that your fire from heaven would rain down upon them yes jesus that they would cease to exist in our lives and that you would chart a course very specific and intentional and unique for each person that would lead us down the path towards no more excuses yes jesus whatever that looks like god we give you freedom we release you into our lives and our situations Please, even now because Please. we would be free from these excuses. We would be free. We, 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 we sometimes think through God, what would it look like yes. to live a life free from excuses? Yes. And God, somebody right now is thinking to themselves that looks like a lot of work and they're discouraged. 
Yes. Oh man, I have a lot of excuses. And I mean, I'm just, I'm discouraged. God, I pray that you would encourage them even now. This journey that we are embarking on will not be easy, but it will be worth it. Yes, Lord. It's going to require work. It's going to require work. Yes. It's going to require work. So God, set your people's minds towards doing the work. Yes. Father, there are other requests in the chat as well life situations i i can't i can't begin to recount all of the ones that i have read over the course of this prayer moment that we've been in families uh estrangement uh marriages sickness uh, bereavement suicide death uh the, the the situation in the middle east there are so many situations that have been raised by your people yes lord and we are not ignorant to them and we know you are not ignorant to them either. And we lift them before you, God. We lift them before you. Recognizing, recognizing that you are the answer to these situations. Father, we end this prayer by reiterating one more time. In the areas of finance, in the areas of health and diet and fitness, in the areas of of how we relate to one another, both at home and on our jobs and in the marketplace, in the areas of equipping ourselves in terms of study and, and, and certification and, and showing ourselves approved, in the areas of our spiritual life and the time we spend with you, God, we are canceling excuses. Excuses, yes. Help us to see them, God. Increase our sensitivity to the excuses that we make without even thinking about them. Yes. We can't cancel excuses that we don't even realize are there. And so God, we give you permission today to do this work within us, to start this work within us. And Father, when it's done, we will be careful to give you all the praise, glory, and honor for we ask these things in the matchless name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And amen. 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 Wow, 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 wow. What a day, wow. what a day, what a day. What a day. day. <laughs> what, a de what a way to begin, what a way to start out the week, to mm -hmm. kick off these 21 days of prayer. Doc, I, I'm telling you, I, I myself, I'm going to have to go back through a little later today. Yeah. Uh, after after we've had our little birthday thing for our daughter, but we're going to have yeah. a little, we're going to we're going to sit down together and listen to this one again. I I really believe. I yeah. really believe. This is the start of major change for the people of God if we let it. Yes, if we sir. let it be that change. Listen, the revolution is underway. It is underway. I mean, this thing, Pastor, has just been such an overwhelming burden uh, for, mm. for a long time now. And, you know, it's, it's kind of hard to explain, but it was just resisted with such force. And I'm just grateful that the Lord allowed us to, you know, uh, as, as a ministry to get this done and complete and we're praying that it will be it will go out into the world with spiritual force and impact. I do want to encourage you guys, if you haven't had a chance to get the book, you can order it uh, on our website, www.breathoflife.tv. And when you order it, it supports the ministry or you can get it through Amazon.com. There is an ebook. Uh, there is a hard copy. And probably here in about a month, we're going to have an audio version of, available for you as well. It's mm -hmm. going to take a little, little bit more time. And I'm going to encourage you, uh, as, as you've done in times past, would you would you be a seed sower? Um, there That's are some right. high schoolers right. that need this. This will change a high schooler's life. Yes. It will change your young adult's life. It, yes. But then but then there's some older folk, you know, like Moses. He's our one of our chief characters. He doesn't get it until he's 80. And, and one of the things I talk about is some people look at the burning bush as the day Moses was called. No, Moses was called from his birth. That wasn't the day he was called. That was the day he was cornered. Cornered. That, that was simply Ooh. the day when God says, all right, all these, all these excuses, we, we done with that. that. That's the end. Wow. And see, some of us have been called for a long time. This is just a season where God is going to corner some of us, where he's just going to mm. say, you know what? All, all this stuff you've been propping up. We're, we're, we're done with that. This is time. This is the season for somebody. And so I, I'm praying that this will be a rich, 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 rich blessing to the body of Christ. 
Amen. Amen. Family, I want to say this. Your moderators have been placing some links in the chat. Make sure you take face special and, uh, attention to those. But regardless, if you're watching on YouTube, if you're watching on Facebook, in the description, there are links there not only to be able to purchase the book, uh, but to be able to get it from either from Breath of Life or from Amazon. Now, as mm -hmm. Pastor Snell has shared, if you purchase it from us, from directly from Breath of Life, it is a little cheaper. But yep. if you, you, you know, some of you are on that, you know, Amazon Prime life and you want it in two <laughs> days or less. Prime. And so, yeah. so, so, you know, if that's you, then go ahead and over to Amazon Prime and, and go ahead and order it there. But we have both of those links in the description, no matter where you're watching, Facebook mm -hmm. or YouTube on either Oakwood Church or on Breath of Life. We have those links for you. And again, our moderators are in the chat and they will share those links with you as well. Ah, tomorrow's chapter. What is that? Which, 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 chapter, oh, what's the, so which we're chapter, chapter two? Uh, mm -hmm. yeah, what mm -hmm. chapter is it? I guess I should, I should know this. <laughs> uh, I, 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 I usually have it written down, but I caught myself two. off guard. Oh, this is, it's, ooh, this is a critical ooh. chapter. Ooh. Is it that you, is it can't. that you can't or you won't? That's, this is a serious chapter. It, it's, it's an important chapter. So is it uh, that don't, you can't or you won't? Ooh. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So don't, don't let any excuse keep you from being with us tomorrow morning at, at six central time. So it's, it's seven for the Eastern standard folk a little early for our, our Cali friends, but, yes, but we want to, we want to have perfect attendance all 21 days, perfect attendance, perfect we, attendance, we do it. perfect attendance. Do it. And our speaker tomorrow is actually pastor Snell. So I, I, I yeah, want to make we'll sure right we share that as well. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, and, and I, pastor, pastor Paul, I think, I believe is our host tomorrow. And we're, mm -hmm. so he's going to, he's going to ask you some of the same questions I've asked. How many yeah. have you shared this with? What is, he's mm -hmm. going to give you an excuseless question. I wrote down a number of excuseless questions today, just as we were going through uh, the message. I, I said, what's your lid? Oh, what's your mm -hmm. lid? What's your lid? Yeah. Uh, what, what, check this one out. How, what hard work have you done that you're re reaping the benefits mm -hmm. right now? Oh, you see, yeah. you see, since sometimes it's not just that we need to make the shift. There mm -hmm. are other areas of our lives and aspects yeah. of our lives where we have made the shift. We had a, mm -hmm. a somebody on the podcast recently who, uh, uh TJ uh, J Jackson, he, he yeah. has lost a significant amount of yeah. weight, but it wasn't yeah. just the weight loss. There was mm -hmm. a perspective shift that happened. He began e eliminating excuses. And so we yeah. want to have some of those examples for us to be able to share with others uh thank you guys so much yo 4 a.m for cali but she says she'll be here what is yeah. that is absolute dedication i love it some Praise of you God. have said happy birthday to my little one in the chat thank you so much for that as well family <laughs> we are going to get out of your way and allow you to get on with your day today but we we encourage you to spend another few thoughtful moments mm -hmm. in communion with god allow yeah. god to speak to you he's willing to speak to you if mm -hmm. you give him some time Amen. give him some time Give him some time. Uh, Let me just say this so in closing. I just want you to know we love you. We don't take your 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 viewership and your support for granted. And we pray that God would richly, richly bless you for your continued support of the Oakwood University Church and the Breath of Life Ministry. Absolutely. Be blessed, family.